Awesome, welcome guys, it's me Nazmus here and welcome to another video. You, today we're going to be updating to Windows 10 build 4942. And finally we have a build packed with new features, so if you want to know what's in the build, stay tuned. Hello and welcome to another video, my name is Nazmus Kandrick and today we're going to be updating to the next build of Windows 10. Build Windows 10 Redstone 2 build 14. 942. I'm currently on build 14.936. Let me go to Winver here. That I'm currently on Windows 10 OS build 14.936. And 49, uh, the, the new build 14.942, I believe, um, was released yesterday at night. I didn't have a chance to record it, but, but I will now. 14.936. But if I go to w Windows Update, as you could see, at night, yesterday night, uh, it had actually, it didn't. Check for it. Check for it. Check for update yesterday in the morning. Uh, so we didn't find anything, but the build was released yesterday in the evening. I think it checked for update again today morning, but by then I was in, in active hours and it didn't install without my permission. It'll it'll only install down install automatically restart automatically after the active hours. We'll talk about the active hours in a bit, uh, especially there's because there's some changes regards to active hours with this new build uh, currently. If I go change active hours, the maximum I could change right now is 12, and that's going to be changing with the new build. So we're going to talk about that, but first, I'm going to click the Restart Now button, and we'll be back after the new build is released, and we'll talk about what has changed since the last build. Let's get started. You're watching Nazmus Labs, where we talk about technology, gaming, rapid transit, education, and a lot more. So if you like this content, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to be notified of all new videos as soon as they're available. Alright guys, are you ready? I'm going to be clicking the restart now button and off we go. So let's do this in 3, 2, 1. Alright, we're updating the new build. The process has started. Let's Before we get to the actual change lock, let's get the boring stuff out of the way. Let's talk about the bug fixes and the known issues for this build. And right after we talk about that, we're going to get to the new stuff, the new features. Finally, we're seeing new features, new app updates. We're going to get the new Photos app. We're going to get the new uh, updated version of, um, I don't know, regist Windows Registry. And a lot more things are coming up. But let's get the boring stuff out of the way. Let's talk about the new features. Uh, actually, sorry, the new improvements. The bug fixes from the previous builds. Let's let's get started. Fixes and one fixes and issues where SF, SFC slash scan now in an elevated prompt would fail at twenty percent, and show could not perform the requested operation error. Fixed an issue where some areas in your notifications would not respond to clicks. Fixed an issue that caused personalizations and background settings page to crash or show an empty context menu when right clicking on the images on one uh, one of the images fixed an issue that caused devices devices and printers page to load slowly in control panel when certain types of audio devices were in it fixed an issue where windows defenders anti malware anti malware service executables would use large <laughs> amount of cpu Fixed an issue where some NTFS partition might show up as RAM for external hard drive. Now here are the known issues for this build. The IIS, Internet uh, Information Service, I think, World, World Wide Web Publishing Services will not be able to start correctly. If you use that, you might want to skip this build. Xbox li Live sign-in might fail. So if you're a gamer and you want to rack up the achievements, um, you might want to skip the build. Or unless you were confident that you could save the achievements locally and hopefully by the next build you could sync it up again hopefully but if you care about that stuff you might want to switch yourself to a slow ring and wait for a newer build so these are the known issues and the fixed updates now uh, we're still on restarting we haven't gone to the next phase that says configuring updates for Windows 10 but we're not gonna do that what I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop, stop the recording and we're gonna come back God willing and we're going to take a look at the new features of Windows 10 for PCs build 14.942. We're getting to the good stuff finally, guys. Finally. All right. See you in a bit. Configuring updates for Windows 10. 28% complete. Do not turn off your computer. All right, guys. Final restart here. I restarted twice already. We're at the third restart. We should be getting to the new version of Windows eh, very soon, anytime now. So uh, this is the last restart. That means. We should, after the spinning circle and update progress, we should go straight to the login screen. 75% complete. Do not turn off your computer. This will take a while. 
This calls for a can of Coca-Cola. Yes. All right. Try to drink some while I wait. <clears throat> Coca-Cola is not a sponsor of this video. Just saying. I would love if they are someday in the future. But yeah. 84%. Alright folks, it's me Nasmus and we're back with Windows 10 Build 14942. You will see on my, me on Microsoft Edge. I just opened the browser because there is a new version of the Edge HTML rendering engine. Yes, on the anniversary update of Windows 10, we're at Edge HTML version 14. Now we have been upgraded to version 15 and there are a lot of new web stuffs. Uh, web technology is enabled. Uh, and you can find them but go by going to changewindows.org and click on the build number and here you'll see all the changes in Microsoft Edge oh all the changes in Microsoft Edge if you want to read this go to changewindows.org and click on the build and you should see Microsoft Edge change log there are some technology changes uh, some of the experimental things has been now been enabled by default and there's some new about dot flag experimental changes or features that you could enable now at your own risk of instability okay so but let's we got out of the edge stuff there's some new stuff the first thing oh yes my favorite is the registry editor change let me go to reg edit if I go to reg edit here zoom in and you could see my reg edit right there I'm gonna minimize this magnifier yes let me zoom out here registry editor has an address bar finally you can type in your locations if I go to computer slash H key us users I could automatically get into the appropriate folder no more digging into com complicated and confusing tree structures with really small clicking point now all you have to do is just type in the address and you're going to be taken to exactly what that position is and if you want to tell someone to go make a change at a certain position such as this position right here the play if say you want someone to turn off the uh, infrared option and turn off play sound option or tr turn off or turn on show tray icon in the past you had to go and look manually type in the word computer manually type type in H key underscore users manually type in you know type in exactly where to go now all you have to do is double click on the address bar actually control a select all and select the address uh, on the address bar and right click copy now you could paste it to a web page or somewhere on the word document and or email and that's how you could easily let someone know to go to this location and change make the change there you could also they could also copy it and paste it on their own registry editor and they could get to the exact same position that is amazing guys amazing so what if I try going to uh, place on what if I try the exact location of one of the key values no, I cannot. I cannot seem to actually show tray icon. No, I cannot seem to actually type in the name of the file. Like in File Explorer, you could you could type in the address plus the name of a file, and the file would open. So you cannot do that. You cannot just type in the address plus the name of a key to automatically open the key. You still have to go to the address and double click. On the key you want to change or add a new key by clicking new uh, <clears throat> so that's an update to the registry editor um, all right all right well let's see what we got we also have updates to the let's see how uh, the start menu yes start menu oh one of the things that change windows.org mentions uh, is that the control X icon the power user icon right here let me zoom in for you guys this icon used to have control panel of option here uh, if I go here let's see it used to have a control panel option and right there though this has been replaced with settings clicking on it now brings up the settings menu now you cannot you can no longer right click here 
and go to the control panel you go to the settings instead so they're stripping away the control panel more and more if you still want to go to the control panel I might think you could click system right here you could right click and click system and you'll be still be taken to the traditional control panel from here you could cl click on the control panel home icon to go back to control panel but it's only a matter of time be before Microsoft replaces this system option with let me see it with the about option because this screen is literally the same as almost the same as the control panel system screen so there you go this is the new change in the Windows to power user option menu <clears throat> what else has changed we have um, we can now hide apps on the start menu. Before that, let's talk about the new icon. Windows Update has a new icon. And to see that, there you go. Windows Update has a new icon. That's like a 3D, um, uh, 3D monitor with the refresh logo for Windows Update. It used to be a s spinning, like a loop logo. So I don't think they have made the change in the settings app. Yeah, the settings app still has a re refresh refresh logo, but the new 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 icon as you saw earlier is a monitor, 3D monitor with a refresh logo in there. So that has to be changed soon enough. It hasn't changed here, but it will change hopefully. So there you go. There's Windows update. Now the final the biggest feature is that we have a new start menu. Yes, this is what the current start menu looks like. You have the all apps on the left and the tiles on the right and you have a hamburger menu you can expand and see the options here or actually see the names labels of the option here but now with the settings app if you go to settings and if you go to personalize and then um, start and there's one option is hide apps app list in the start menu now when you click it you only get the tiles and you could click on the t click on this button and you only get the app list awesome isn't it now what will be interesting is actually is that when I close the start menu it remembers where I was and it opens it there so if someone wants to always hide the tiles all they would have to do is switch the app list and close the start menu and that way they would have just the app list that, that's very cool I really like this compact start menu I really 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 like this I think it's awesome I'll keep it this way makes the start menu look a lot more compact I like it alright there's some other changes that you might want to take a notice of and that is changes to active hours now you can increase the number of times we talked about right before we started the upgrade now the maximum of up uh, active hours you could have is 18 hours per day that means within the 18 hours up to 18 hours the time range that you set Windows will not automatically restart and after that time it will automatically restart so and by the way this option is only available to pro education and enterprise users if you're a home user you'll be stuck with the 12 hour limitation and you could see whether or not you have the 18 hour by seeing that text right here you could it'll either say 12 or 18 since I'm using pro you could see you could set active hours up to 18 hours from from your start time so there you go 18 hours for me because I'm using Windows 10 Pro. Also, another update change is that if you have uninstalled the pre-built or pre-installed Windows 10 app, after a upgrade to an after upgrading to a new build, those apps will not automatically get reinstalled. It'll respect your provisioning settings. So if you uninstall those apps, they'll remain uninstalled. Or if your IT manager has uninstalled those apps, they'll remain uninstalled unless you reinstall them yourself from the Windows Store and I think that is it also another one um, if you have a th three and a half or more gigabytes of uh, memory I have eight I have 10 gigabytes of memory it says 9.9 .9 here if you go to your processes and if you see processes uh, what used to be a, a Microsoft Windows would clump all Windows system processors into one process called svhhost.exe now if you have three and a half gigs or more RAM those processors will get separated into individual processes that you could identify and it's useful for trouble troubleshooting if one of the processes is causing problems you could isolate that process now and restart it or end it uh, critical system processes will still remain part of SV, S, 
the chhost.exe. So let me find it. If I see Windows Processes, Service Host, uh, let's see, svchhost.exe. Hmm. Service Host, let's see, you nope. Know, Uh, maybe these are all, you know, these are all <laughs> uncategorized process. But to be sure, I'm going to go to my uh, details here. I'm going to find svchhost.exe. There it is. There's a lot of, now you could see a lot of uh, running processes separated. And you could see what they are by going to... Um, Username and you could see what username uh, level they're running local system system and these are all Tasks that are running under SVCH host study actually I'm not sure if that was the case with the older build if we had this many running processes But what Microsoft showed us that there was an SVCH host exe and you could expand it like you could expand this and you could see all the processes clearly I'm not seeing this here But maybe these are it Maybe these are all the service hosts, DCO, DCOM server uh, process, or local service, or service host, local service, local service networking, and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, so I think these are it. Now you could end individual processes if you, if if you have a problem with one of them. Uh, by the way, do not end end processes unless you have no clue of what you're doing. But yeah, there you go. That's another change to Windows 10. Um, also, another improvements improve frame frame rates when the game game bar is showing is shown on full screen games. Improved uh, precision touchpad features. Narrators will read content of the page before the content on the top on the bottom app bar if it ha the app has one. So, so the narrator used to read the app bar content, the menu bar on the bottom, but now it's going to read the content of the page before reading the menu bar or the app bar on the bottom. So yeah, there you go. And a lot of new keyboard shortcuts for narrator. If you care into accessibility, I'm going to do another video talking about the narrator updates to Windows 10 Redstone 2. Anyway. And finally, the Photos app. Let's check that out. Photos app, photos, yes. There's the Photos app, guys. This is the existing Photos app. And we're going to be updating this Photos app to the new Photos app that's available with this with this and the previous insider preview build but that is going to be another video so if you want me to explore go deep dive into the photos app check out the video on the screen uh, there's info card on the top of right of the screen or on the side of this YouTube page and also link in the description box check out that video where I cover go deep dive into the new update of the photos app. I haven't updated yet. It still has the old UI, but it will get updated with a completely new user interface. We're going to talk about that in the next video. So guys, thank you for watching. Make sure to like this video if you like it. If you don't like or if you have if you want me to do something differently, make sure to have hit the dislike button. If you dislike it, I know that there's something I could change or I could make better. So like it or dislike it to provide feedback. Make sure to comment down below to see. Tell, let me know what do you think of this build. Are you using this build or, or are you deciding to hold on? So yeah, let me know and make sure to watch my photos video. It's coming up soon there. Thank you for watching.